Stocks end the week on a down note as Trump levies tariffs on China and China fires right back. Plus, the media wars are heating up. Will Disney respond and outgun Comcast? In other news, Apple and Oprah. Oh, a deal made in content heaven. Dovish Draghi dominates Powell as the Fed hike in rates and the dollar spike wreaks global havoc. Paris puts up a massive bulletproof wall around the Eiffel Tower to combat potential terrorist attacks. And I thought we were going to build that wall. And the Inspector General's report came out on Hillary Clinton's email investigation. And we find out that the FBI chief, James Comey, was using private email while investigating Hillary's private email. You just can't make this stuff up. And this week, the World Cup has begun. So how about the Chew Dog composite? Well, the S&P 500 was down 3.07. The Dow was down 84.83. NASDAQ was down 14.66. The Russell was down 0.83. Gold was down 25.50. And the 10-year bond was down 0.02. So big losers across the board. And the losers lost by a total of 128.91. What does that mean? Nothing. Should you be paying attention to any of this? No. Stay away. What should you be paying attention to? The charts. So let's go to it. Here we are with the six-month daily chart on the SPY, and we see that today the stock fell down here to the 20 EMA and bounced intraday. Based on the past patterns, it looks like into next week we'll probably retest that down here, and we can see that in the MACD. Looking here, we're heading on down. I'm not sure how much we're going to pierce through. It's going to be probably similar to this here and this here. However, one thing to keep in mind is the markets generally move in threes. One, two, and three. They don't want to make it too easy for the traders, so it's going to mix up. So Keep your eyes out for next week. I don't think it's going to be anything bad, but I do think we're going to come on down here and move the fast line through the slow line and have another consolidation. But then we're going to have to pay attention to what happens after that. Again, the market don't like to repeat too often in such a short time frame. They got to keep those traders off guard. We can see here a little bit of a divergence happening with the weakening in the histogram. That's going to be another little red flag. Again, not a real concern. Through the price rate of change, looks like the fast line moved on down here. So I expect it to move toward zero or the midline here. Again, some consolidation into next week. We see that starting here in the RSI as well. Moving on down, it's just a moderate 56.91 into the stochastic stochastic also fast line heading on down looks like uh, we'll have a contraction here to this point not sure exactly how far it will go but uh, it looks like it's heading down volume today's uh, red day was a little bit higher than previously here but uh, that can happen moving into the williams the williams looks like it topped out gave you an idea things were going to head on down here and that's exactly what's going to happen into next week most probably i think we'll spend uh, some good time most of next week perhaps down moving toward the 20 ema are we going to bounce off of that for good as we did back here i'm not quite sure But uh, we'll see into next week what happens, but I don't expect anything bad to happen from there. So now let's go to the weekly chart. Two-year weekly chart on the SPY. We see here that the bounce off the 50 EMA on up through the 20 EMA, and we're heading on up to uh, the 280 price mark. Not quite at uh, this level here, but uh, we'll knock on that door pretty soon. Moving on down into the MACD, we can see that uh, we certainly bottomed here, and then the fast line is definitely on its way, moving through the slow line at that point here, and it looks like it's going to head up further. So looking back, uh, we had a similar situation here where we bottomed and then we headed on up here a couple of months and then way back here 
at this point we had a bottom moved up through the slow line and on up for uh, several months here this to me seems to be a little bit more similar than this period here so i'm going to look uh, back at this time frame here to give me a reference of where perhaps we're going to go here and then into the future so we headed on up for uh, let's see one two three about four months or so we're already one and a half months into this move so we have a few more months perhaps in the extension on the way up as i said last week we clearly shifted gears into the weekly and that's where the power is right now looking at the histogram this definitely was much deeper than it was way back here so we're gonna have to keep that in mind too uh, is the recovery going to be as strong here as it was in here? May not be, but that's is at least what I'm going to be looking at from this point to here as a proxy for what may happen in the current time frame. Back into the price rate of change, everything looks fine. Moving on up, relative strength. It's, uh, it's struggling here, but it is still moving on up. And certainly the stochastics is up and away and as well, the Williams is up and away and it's up here and it's going to do some sawtoothing as it had uh, done in this time frame here in this time frame here and this time frame here so that's going to remain elevated here back on up here to the price chart as we head on up here in my opinion with uh, the way the economy is going that's where the risks start to increase and in my opinion the maximum level of risk is going to be at this point here let's go to the monthly chart and i'll just give you uh, a quick idea of what i expect this is the 20 year monthly chart on the spiders and at this time if you are not a subscriber this is when you want to subscribe because you will hear from me things that you won't hear from anybody else because they don't know. And what's happening here is we're uh, moving on up and we're going to get to this point in all likelihood. And at that point in time is the maximum amount of risk. In my opinion, it's going to be or look like a double top. And if we cannot climb out of that, then we're going to fall and we're going to fall fast. You see that a little bit here. You can see that we're coming down here, the fast line coming down here, and it's reflecting, and it's going to head on back up. Not unlike this time frame here. The only difference back here is we had some central bank funding. They printed a lot of money, and we powered on out. Here, we don't have that, or we won't likely have that. And if we don't have that, then we can fall, and we can fall quickly. Price rate of change, we've come down, we're heading on up here, and I think we're going to lose some steam once we get to that double top there. Certainly, I think we're going to lose steam looking uh, at this point. We've fallen quite a ways, and it's going to take quite a bit to get us back up there or near there, and I'm not sure if we have that or not. But we still have some time, and uh, things may change between now and then. But right now, I'm just looking at these different oscillators, and that's what I see. So... We're going to have uh, several weeks, if not longer, before we get to that uh, point here to reach that previous high. So you can make some changes in your uh, stock portfolio based on your own decisions. Either sell or you can trade into other stocks or start raising cash. For me, I'm raising cash. I want to be ready for this uh, double top here. I'm going to play the bonds on the downside. And then uh, if and when we hit bottom, then we're going to plow our money back into the market. But I uh, think there's going to be a lot of risk. The risk reward scenario is not good at this point. But we'll see here soon enough. And for today, that's Chew Dog Charts. Thank you.